Hi there. I'm your classmate, Gabrielle Strickler. I am a working mom of three amazing kids, a wife, a children's minister, and a student at National University hoping to earn my teaching credential. I am also a huge Beatles fan. Let It Be is my favorite song, and quite honestly, my favorite of their albums, but more on that later. For now, we need to talk about how I became a Beatles fan. It's not that I grew up listening to the Beatles. My mom was a Little Richard fan, and my dad was an outlaw country man. Actually, my mother loved classical music, including Chopin and Beethoven, but she also loved the Bee Gees and anything kind of upbeat, thus the obsession with Little Richard. Uh, my dad, as you can probably tell from the Outlaw Country comment, um, loved Willie Nelson, Merle Haggard, and Hank Williams Jr. My generation wasn't the Beatles generation either. I am a Gen X kid. We had Rick Astley, U2, George Michael, Michael Jackson, Depeche Mode, Oingo Boingo, and AHA. There was also Run DMC and NWA. In my early 20s, we were listening to grunge music like Nirvana, Soundgarden, and Pearl Jam. Hip-hop was still around with Beastie Boys and Cypress Hill. To be honest, I'm a bit of a traitor to my generation because I was not a huge grunge fan. I liked the Beastie Boys and Cypress Hill, but not so much the grunge stuff. Green Day didn't totally hurt my feelings, and Alanis Morissette was a female voice I could at least relate to, but grunge just wasn't my thing. I first encountered the Beatles in high school. It was a friend's dad who introduced me to the mop tops. <laughs> the girl and I weren't super close. Actually, I think she had a crush on my younger brother, but her dad was cool and studying as a PhD candidate in sociology. His dissertation was something on modern teens he never got into details, but he needed to interview kids our age, and his daughter had no interest. One day, he asked if my best friend and I would be interested in helping him, and we said, sure, why not? He asked us about driving fast, dating, music, friendship drama, and teenage drinking. Pretty standard teenage stuff. We hung out with his daughter afterwards, and he, her dad ordered us a pizza, and we watched a movie on V. I'm aging myself, but that's okay. <laughs> we hung out with his daughter um, for a while, and you know, it's interesting. I don't remember her name, and I don't remember her dad's name, but I remember the movie. It was Help, starring the Beatles. I was amazed at the fashion and music and Ringo's just funny self. That started my love of the Beatles. I was also listening to a lot of the radio station K-Earth 101 in Los Angeles. And back then, the oldies being played were from the 50s and 60s. I started recording Beatles songs on cassette directly from the radio. Soon I had a whole collection, eventually, and loved all of their songs. As it seems to go when we are young, I grew apart from that friend. We lived in student housing. Uh, my mother was a PhD candidate also. And it's similar to military housing with friends and families always shifting in and out. But the Beatles stuck with me as I started a drama program at my local city college. I actually met my future husband in an acting class there, and we were set up for a scene together, and we hit it off right away, talking for hours instead of rehearsing our scene. He asked me what music I liked, and I said the Beatles and oldies. He grew up with ex-hippie parents, and unlike me, knew the Beatles backwards and forwards. He asked me what my favorite album was, and I said, not the White Album. If you say you are a Beatles fan, you get asked this question often. He laughed and was impressed that I thought the White Album was overrated and too standard an answer. I told him at the time that I didn't have a favorite. I just liked it all, which was the truth. Today, if you ask me my favorite Be Beatles album, I will always say Let It Be. My husband and I lived together for six years, got married, and then eventually had my first child when I was 35. Like many of us Gen X kids, we were hesitant to commit and took our time creating our families. Thankfully, my husband and I managed to grow up together. 
and after my son was born, I really grew to love the title song on that album. It was about Paul McCartney's mother and not Mary from the Bible, as many people often assume. He was seeing her in his dreams and wrote the song. Apparently these dreams occurred during a particularly difficult time for the Fab Four. As my son grew older, he began to love it too. We bonded over it being mother and son, but also because it is a truly beautiful song. My husband loves Abbey Road. Take a look at that. And as he says, it has the best B-side of any album in history. This is probably true because of its transition and terrific songs. I have to say Rubber Soul is a major contender, in my opinion as well. But it is Let It Be that reminds me of when my son was little and it holds a special connection for just he and I. I will always be a country fan because of my dad. I can remember my mom studying and writing for her PhD to the sounds of Chopin and Beethoven, and they will always feel like home because of it. Bebop and Little Richard make me think of times when my mom danced in grocery stores, embarrassing my teenage self. The music of my generation reminds me of when I was young and had my future in front of me but the Beatles will forever feel like mine because I discovered them outside of the music of my upbringing. They are the new memories of the life I built for myself with my husband and my children. The song Let It Be connects me to my son and speaks to the mother I want to be for all my children. It will forever be special to me and stout out as words of wisdom as long as I live. <laughs> 